Chapter 3. Okay, so, um, let's go ahead and pick up the green idol. Why not? As we're here anyway. And just touch the yellow snake one time to turn it to a 45 degree angle. That will become important later on. But after that, just go ahead, run through to the other room. Okay, now. If you haven't already, then you need to make sure that you've picked up the piece of paper from underneath the cushion on the couch. Okay, if you want to have a look at it by all means, reduce your wicks upon all snakes there. Gazing upon reducer turns on lockers to stone. It's got one hole in. Uh, at the moment, if we take ourselves over to the dresser and look at this little piece of wall here, these two pieces of paper and four pins. A little scrap of paper in the corner, by all means, pick it up, touch it, touch it back, it then completes this code here for something later on. Take our Medusa page, pin it to the wall with the four pins. Take it back. When you look at it again, it's now got four holes in, and they're in a similar configuration to something we were just playing with to get a key. Armed with this information, we're going to go into the other room to the piano. I'm going to put the Medusa page down on the right hand side here, and if you zoom in, and reorientate your device again. You'll notice that each hole has got a red line showing through it that goes from the center of the hole outwards to the edge in a specific direction for each one. These positions match up with the uh, the four cogs that all stopped at the same point when we touched it to get that key just previously. Now those cogs are all independent of each other and every time you touch one of them it just moves around an eight for the circle. And so you have to line it up with these four red marks. So my bottom left is going up to the right. That one there is going down to the left. This one here is going to the right. And this one here is going down. I think that was the same as last time. So those two on the left go towards each other. Right and down. So we look above Medusa. That goes up. This one, see, if you just touch them. Down to the right and down. And we get this blue code. The blue code is 139. And that's the code for our blue statue. 139. So touch that and we'll do it again. If you remember the, from chapter 2, uh, sort of Antrim Escape 2 even, you'll remember how we read these numbers uh, on this clock here. Brief uh, rundown. It's like Roman numerals. Dash is 1, 2 dash is 2. Circle, 5. Circle with a line going for the middle of it is minus 1 from 5. So that's a 4. Um, it's pretty much self explanatory from there. So if our code is 139, that's a 1 already. We need 3 at the top, so that's 3. And 9 looks like that. Brilliant stuff. That opens up a socket for you to put the blue snake into. Just whack it in there. Brilliant stuff. We need the code for the green snake. That's up there above the uh, above the cogs, which are above Medusa. Remember I told you to ignore it earlier. Okay guys, this is completely different from what your code will be, it randomizes, but this is how you work it out. This is going to give you your uh, your green pillar code. First of all, look at the bottom line. Very simple, it tells you that a small portion is equal to 3. And the small portion is the value of your inner ring of the 3 on the pillar. Now look at the top line, we have a small portion and two medium portions. And that totals to 13. And so if the small portion wasn't there, our total would be 10 and we would just have two medium portions. So that tells us that a medium portion is equal to 5. And the medium portion relates to the middle ring of the 3 on our code wheel. Next, go to the middle line, you'll see that our total is 15 and that's one of each. The, medial, uh, the small portion, the medium portion and the large portion. We know that a small portion is 3. And we know that a medium portion is equal to 5. So if you take those two away from the 15, um, you are left with the amount of 7, which means that is how much a large portion is valued at, and that is the outer ring of our code. So from the center outwards, our green code is 3, 5, 7 in this instance. But like I say, yours will be different. Okay. And put the green snake in there. Oop, don't go around. Come back, there we go. Green snake. Now, remember from the Medusa page, it says she awakes when all snakes stare. Now, we already turned the left hand, uh, the yellow snake, sorry, to be facing her. We've got to do both these two in here as well. So, we touch the pedestals, go around, and indeed she wakes up. Green one was already facing out into the room, he's behind her. 
Okay, it doesn't have any eyeballs, so put in the green gem and the red gem. So now she's got eyeballs. Come and look at the dresser. And look at the mirror. I'm going to move these two dresses out of the way. In the top left hand corner, it's kind of broken. If you touch it there, you get a piece. Now, while you're here, also, you can see the reflection of uh, Ryan. Touch his belt buckle, and you get his belt. And when we go back to Medusa, have a look. Use the piece of mirror. And once the animation's over, we can recover the uh, two gems. We're going to need those for later on. And take Medusa's head along with us as well. So come away from there. And we go over to the wall above the, uh, the couch there with the cogs. And if we put Medusa in on the far right between those two cogs, and if we use the belt to brace between these two, like a conveyor belt, and then we flip that handle, and uh, a secret passageway opens up. You'd think that's the end of it, but it's not. There's still a little bit more. It's far too dark to be able to see in there. We don't know what we're getting. So, we need, we need a light source. If we go back over to the dresser, and we have a look at this piece of paper. Remember what I said earlier about Prism and H2O? Uh, uh, that's our clue to get our light source. Prism, H2O. Prism, not Prism. So you're thinking. Go over to the wall where the table with all the buttons are, the element table, periodic table. And you're going to spell out prism using the buttons. And for those of us who can't think back to our high school chemistry classes and aren't all that familiar with the chemical elements table, here's the cheat sheet. Okay, once you've done that, hit the button again, you get a prism. You also spell out H to O. H two H H O O water. Two hydrogen molecules, one oxygen molecule, you get the water shaped crystal. Okay. Come back around to the wall that had Medusa's head on and take the fireplace grill with us. We're gonna hurdle the couch into the other room and have a look at the fire. Place the fireplace grill over the fire, bucket of water on top of that, put both the prism and the watership crystal inside the water, they melt down and become a glowing prism. Take that back, hurdle the couch once more, and the prism will fit in that triangle right there. And that lights up. So now we can see the secret tunnel. And you think, yeah, yeah, that's it. I'm out of chapter three. Not quite. There's still one more part. You actually have to go through the f secret tunnel. So you hit it. Uh, oh, and she reminds us we're going to need... Always forget it. Heard of the couch. The little piece of something from above the fire had the owl footprints in it. Remember that? Yeah, the ancient tablet. Take that with us. Now, this is a bit of an action bit of the game. You turn your device over, and they start running down a long corridor. Your controls are touching the left and the right of the screen to denote where you, which direction you want them to go into. And you've got to avoid the obstacles down the entire length of the tunnel. It gets quicker and trickier. Just keep your eyes at the top. Because there are three of you, you get three three lives, three crashes before you have to start. Really. If you did it. All right, I'm going to figure it out of the secret tunnel. Yay, we're out, and now indeed you are out of chapter three.